The purpose of these videos is to orient you to what components look like and how you act on them. If you haven't watched the Watch Me First video, please do that first as it lets you know what to expect. As you read in Chapter 5, networks are visual displays of any other component in the program. And so technically speaking, networks are not really independent components themselves. Every action you take on a component when it's displayed visually in a network occurs everywhere else in the Atlas TI project. So the network is not separate from the project. It's just an alternative graphical or visual display of a part of the project, a different way to work that is very helpful for some tasks in some contexts. Regarding actions, other than the common actions to all components, like renaming, putting into groups, adding a comment, exporting, and so on, there are no actions specific to networks. Actions taken in the network are taken on the individual components that are being visually displayed. Networks are not technically speaking independent components in the software that you act on, but because they're so valuable and so central to many people's work, we think of them as a component. A network is simply a graphic, or a diagram, or a picture of any components you wish to display, whether the components are linked to one another or not, and you do this for whatever purpose you wish. Like this saved network that I saved for ongoing work on this particular subset of the codes. I prefer to change the display to shadow or the boxes aren't very visible. It's true that many researchers think of networks as a way of displaying linked codes like this in a model or as a part of your framework or as a theory. But networks are not specifically concerned about codes at all. Any component can be displayed. Anywhere you see a component, you can right-click on it and pop up a network for it. For example, here's a document, a right-click and open a network. It is simply a box that is a display of that document. And I can open, say, the Quotation Manager. And I can drag in a quotation, this one and this one. I've intentionally picked quotations from the same document so that you can see that a dotted line shows up, which I call a passive link because the quotation refers to text from that document. The linkage doesn't do anything other than serve as a display. And as we saw in the video on memos, when memos are linked to other components, they also have these visual but passive links displayed. I'll bring in a memo and I can link it to this quotation and a passive linkage comes up. But when codes are linked to codes, as in this network, or quotations are linked to quotations, then the links are named relations and can be acted on. They provide more opportunities for meaning making. You can write a comment on the relation. Here is a comment. And you can display a manager of all the linked pairs of codes. And similarly for the pairs of hyperlinked quotations. The characteristics of the components displayed in networks are no different from when they are displayed in their managers or in the browser lists or in the margin area. If you right click on a component and change its name, the name will change everywhere. Similarly, if you create a new component or delete a component when working inside a network, it's created and deleted everywhere. You can decide to simply not display a component. I'll right click and remove from view but its link to the other component will remain in the project. The network is simply a display. But it is a powerful way to work. You can bring in the neighbors of a code. That means other components that are linked to it. Here I'll bring in three codes that are linked to that code. You can pop up the comment of a code and list its quotations and then browse to them in context one by one and it opens up the documents that the quotations come from. Coming back to the network, sometimes it's more convenient to bring in the quotations into the network and work with them there. You can double click and pop up their full text and link the quotation to codes and unlink them just as if you were browsing from document to document. So it's a matter of choice where it's most convenient to fulfill any task. Sometimes context is everything and you prefer to read the quotations in their full context within the document. Sometimes it's more helpful to cluster a group of quotations within a network and have an associated set of codes and memos and do your conceptualizing work from within this diagrammatic view. 
I'll remove these quotations from view by selecting them all and removing them because I want to show you about the layout of the components and it's more convenient to just show you the layout of a set of codes. I prefer to lay out my codes manually as I've been doing, but the program also provides some automatic layouts that you may prefer to use. For example, a circular view or a radial view or a hierarchical view. And it may be that some of these pre-organized ways of laying out your components really suit the style of your work. Networks can also be exported in various ways to print them or export them as graphic files. And there is a network manager in which network groups can be created just as for other components that we discussed in the video on groups. I don't have any groups of networks in this project. Other than exporting and organizing into groups, there are no other component-specific actions on network themselves because networks aren't really independent components. They're just views of other components. And so the actions are taken on the components that are displayed within the networks. Well, this completes the orientation to networks, and we now invite you to read about another component in Chapter 5, and then watch the component orientation video.